Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey there, folks. Thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. Our guest today, Dr. Travis Thayer. He's a veterinarian and an employee trainer at many dairies and beef operations around the U.S. He works for Diamond V, and we're glad to have him on the show. It's going to be a good one. You're going to learn a lot about how to handle your new employees and how to handle ones that have been around. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks, welcome to Doc Talk and Dr. Thayer. Welcome. Thank you. Folks, this is Dr. Travis Thayer. He's a veterinarian and he is the employee technical trainer for Diamond V. And he's a friend, colleague, someone who has been in veterinary practice has been around a lot of uh, different uh, dairy cattle, a lot of uh, beef cattle, and, and beyond. But to have him here today, we're going to talk about something that's pretty near and dear to all of our hearts, and that's employee training, which you're doing on a pretty consistent basis. But Dr. Thayer, talk to me about how this all kind of got started, because it's a neat story. Sure, sure. When I was a kid, I, uh, I lived on a thoroughbred farm in Southern California, and uh, my dad was a veterinarian, and did a lot of different things, but his passion was racehorses. And uh, so I would hang out with the workers and picked up Spanish and, and then developed it as a, as a kid, just pure socially. And when I got to college, I started to go on to dairies uh, as part of a work, work for a mastitis laboratory. And I would tell all the people to not speak English to me and only speak Spanish. And uh, so when I uh, started dairy practice in, in uh, California, uh, I used the Spanish a lot, trained in employees. And then in uh, later roles uh, with uh, AgriLabs, you know, supporting cattle vaccines, I would be on a farm and um, people would complain about an employee. And, and I would usually have something in my computer or in my brain to talk to that employee about. And so I would, I would go over and take care of that. And then Diamond V wanted a person to do this full time. And uh, sort of their angle on it uh, to begin with was that the, uh, the yeast metabolite product that, that Diamond V uh, sells and, mm -hmm. and feeds is a, is a low inclusion product. And so in, in order for a producer to truly see the efficacy, we want to make sure it got fed right. And so I, I would go on the farm and i go on the farm and train the employees. And it's 99% uh, Spanish. Uh, I do... I can do English if I have to switch over, but I usually have to redo a PowerPoint. Um, and, and that has also morphed. Basically anything protocol driven on the farm, I'll do. So milking and uh, you know, maternity training, calf care, um, doctoring calves, and then a, more recently I'm starting to look into some middle management training. Oh, sure. Well, it, it just amazes me. I, I just I love the story, first of all, how you learn Spanish and, and it probably helps you with the dialects and and different things to that nature as well and 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 some of the the you know the the different terminology that morphs 
as you start to get Spanglish, right? Yeah, lots of Spanglish. And, um, and so understanding that, but also that there's a necessity that not only probably has to do with getting something right for the product, but also getting right for the animals. Absolutely. So, so you know, we're going to take a break here, but, but how often are you working with people uh, training? Probably, uh, probably three out of four weeks every month. Really? Out, out and about on farms and working with, directly with employees. Great. Well, let's take a break, folks, from Doc Talk. We have Dr. Travis Thayer here. He lives in California. He's a veterinarian. We're going to talk about training your employees, some of his personal experience, and some of the things he sees coming down the road for you, your ranch, your farm. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. This Prevention Works Minute, brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Prevention Works, as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. The reason why we talk about Prevention Works is we want to talk about preventative medicine. What are things that alleviate stress within the life of the animal that will help the animal have a good immune system? And castration is one of those. The one thing we need to know about castration, regardless of the technique that you use, castrating calves as early as possible in life alleviates the most stress. If we can castrate them at birth or the first time we catch them, definitely by the time they're three months of age at the time of the branding shots before turnout, that will be a huge reduction in stress in that calf's life. There is no performance advantage to leaving those testicles on those calves up till weaning and if you leave them on till weaning there's a huge disadvantage because of the stress of castration at the time of arrival at the feedlot leading to increased morbidity, mortality, and railer rates. So castrate those calves as early as possible. Are your cows practical or profitable? If you want them to be both, then come to the Dale Banks Angus Bull Sale Saturday, November 18th near Eureka, Kansas. Selling 130 hard-working, balanced, straight bulls developed in the rugged Flint Hills. For 113 years, the Perriers have been providing practical, profitable genetics to cattlemen nationwide. Join us November 18th or bid online at liveauctions.tv. Call the Perriers at 620-583-4305 or dalebanks.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Travis Thayer, who's a veterinarian from California. What part of California do you live in? I actually live in Oakland, California, by way okay. of marriage. All right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so he's out of California, out of the Oakland area, and works for Diamond V. And we're talking about employee training, and we were talking during the break. There's three types of employee, new employees, ones that have no experience, ones that have a lot of good experience, and then there's some that have a lot of bad experience. Which, which can be difficult. But talk to me a little bit about training employees and how, you know, do we jump in and hand them a manual? Or, you know, yeah. <laughs> that would not work for me. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's in reality really how it happens. Uh, you know, hey, go find that guy with a red hat. He's going to show you around and show you what to do. And, and we're getting better and better as, a, as an industry to invest in that time up front in employees. But onboarding is a, is a really tough tough thing to to do properly so when so then once we 
tell me what your sessions are like then because yeah. okay so they bring you a what would be different between someone who is a novice or new employees or versus experienced employees so so sometimes I get called in to to help address a problem so let's say uh, you know they've got all kinds of nutritional problems and uh, you know maybe some feed audits performed by some of my colleagues at Diamond V have identified some problem areas so I'll go in and usually there's a formal component you know like a PowerPoint presentation and sort of a lecture uh, and discussion and then usually I will go out on the farm and work with the employees you know right around in the feed truck observe their feeding practices give them feedback same thing with other areas. So I'll go in the milking parlor and I'll evaluate what employees are doing and some areas of opportunity. And then usually we'll, we'll come together as a group to, to discuss you know, what I've seen and what, what the dairy needs. I think it's important too. I, I think a lot of times we jump out in something we have passion in, so we develop a training platform for it. But this dairy or feedlot may, need, may not need it. They may know it better than I do. And so one of the most important things for a trainer is, is to listen, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I modify my training on the go almost every time. You know, if you get in love with your PowerPoint slides or, or your way of looking at things, you're not doing the best for the, for the producer or the employees. Right, or, or the industry maybe. And, and right. so, so when, when we take a... Uh, let's say I'm a um, farmer, we got about a minute before break, but let's just say I'm a farmer with a new employee. Is the best thing to do is just say, hey, look, kind of like they do with a waitress, you know, you're a waitress in, in training? Yeah. yeah, they do They do exactly that, in fact, in, on many places. It depends on the need. You know, if they're down a person, <laughs> it's a trial by fire, often yeah. they get put in. And it also depends on the complexity of the job. You know, I'm not going to stick... Uh, stick somebody in a hundred thousand dollar tractor, you know, right off the bat. But uh, you, usually, there's a there's a process of you know explaining the why and then getting them in with more experienced employees. Yeah, because they'll go. I've I've had it with four wheelers, where you know they take off with the four wheeler, but nobody told them how to stop it, and uh, <laughs> yeah. had some problems with that. Anyway. Yeah. Folks, Dr. Travis Thayer from Diamond V is here with us. We're going to talk more about training your employees after these messages. Are your cows practical or profitable? If you want them to be both, then come to the Dale Banks Angus Bull Sale Saturday, November 18th near Eureka, Kansas. Selling 130 hard-working, balanced straight bulls developed in the rugged Flint Hills. For 113 years, the Perriers have been providing practical, profitable genetics to cattlemen nationwide. Join us November 18th or bid online at liveauctions.tv. Call the Perriers at 620-583-4305 or dalebanks.com. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA-licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. 
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Travis there. He's with Diamond V and he is a technical uh, employee trainer, employee tre technical trainer, and he's a veterinarian, got a lot of experience in, in dairy practice and beef practice, uh, and he's spending a lot of time training people on specific areas and specific problems. This is no different than what we do as, as veterinary consultants. Exactly. Um, the difference is, is you're getting a specific, instead of going the same place every month, you're going someplace different and training people up and making sure we're doing things right. And, and so, you know, we were talking during the break, and one of the things, you know, whether you're a good teacher or a good trainer, you've got to care about the people that you're working with. And, and it's obvious about that you're passionate about this and, and care about them. So just talk a little bit to that. Yeah. Well, I started out, you know, d learning this Spanish completely socially. You know, I would go on to farms and, uh, and I just wanted to get to know the people. And, you know, especially if you're out at 3 a.m. and, you know, doing a calving and your helper doesn't speak English, it's a lot more fun to have a conversation and <laughs> not, not speak in sign language, you know, yep. and, and so you can work together a lot more effectively. Um, you know, it's, it's hard seeing some of these folks that are, that are really valuable assets for producers, uh, you know, fight some of the immigration stuff that they have to fight, and that's certainly a, they fight a huge battle before they ever get to our farms. So I, so I certainly have a lot of respect and empathy for what they have to, what they have to deal with. You bet. And I think that, you know, one of the things that kind of, uh, you know, I, I assumed right off the bat when you're saying that most of your training you do is in Spanish, I assume, you know, California regional, the, you know, kind of the, the coastal uh, type states, and it's everywhere. Yep, it is everywhere. I'm, I'm, I probably spend more time outside of California, actually, than inside California, partly just because there's a lot of people in California who, who are able to do what I do. So the demand is other other places. So I spent a lot of time in Colorado, Texas, New Mexico, Kansas doing doing the training. And I see you know a lot of people uh, you know how how hard is it to to get through some of the language barriers. You know, I obviously you you've got uh, English and Spanish speaking people is are we closing the gap or is it about the same? I mean, talk to me a little bit about that as as far as if there is a gap, how do, how do we work around that as a farmer or rancher? Yeah. Well, I, I think more and more, and especially as farms get larger, it's easier and easier to find a bilingual person, and in particularly second generation you know, immigrants, so, so sons, sons or daughters of first generation immigrants can, can be very helpful. Um, I, I think one of the things with the language barrier that I've learned is that um, I can't be embarrassed to say something stupid because it happens all the time, and, but, it, but I think that little bit of humility uh, and you know, ability to do that actually helps me connect more with the workers. You know, I'm going I'm to sound stupid, but I want to learn from you, and, uh, and I hope that that opens the door for them to be more receptive to the information that I have to bring to the table. Absolutely, and I think that, that we have to value, like you said, the, the service that both our Anglo and Hispanic workers bring is tremendous, but it, the, the, the providing the loyalty and the culture of loyalty is probably first and foremost for any of these employees. Yeah, it is huge. And, and I see places where those things are broken and maybe management or ownership doesn't always appreciate those workers. They usually have someone in the middle management knitting that all together and that, that those workers are loyal to. And usually if that chain, part of the chain breaks, then everything falls apart. Yep. So loyalty is important. Yep. Love them or they will leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have a wrap-up with Dr. Travis Thayer. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your Beef Checkoff helps do that. I'm Tom Perrier. Our ranch is called Dale Banks Angus. Dale Banks is not a person, but it's a place. Uh, this ranch was started by my uh, great-grandfather 
he came from northwest England and his farm there was called Dale Banks and so he called his ranch here in the Flint Hills Dale Banks. The beef checkoff today has fulfilled a lot of needs that our industry has had over the years. Uh, we were very involved in trying to get the beef checkoff passed back in the 70s and early 80s because we saw the need then and the beef checkoff I think has fulfilled a lot of those needs. I think some of the, the biggest bonuses that we've gotten from the beef checkoff in the last 20 years have been twofold, both in the research uh, phase of the industry, one being the Beef Quality Assurance Program that showed us just how much money we could capture by simply doing things like moving the injection sites from the hip and, and rump of the animal up to the neck where we had less high-valued cuts. That drove millions of dollars into our industry. The other thing that our beef industry did about 15 years ago was uh, embark on new product development, things like the flat iron steak and things that used to get ground into hamburger and low, other low-valued cuts today are sold for a premium. And that too, just like the Beef Quality Assurance Program, has driven uh, huge dollars into our industry that we all get to share. Matt's the primary uh, driver behind the operation right now and uh, he's the sixth generation and his children will be the seventh generation. I hope our kids are better at telling our beef industry's story. I think the last several years the Beef Checkoff has shown us how to do that better. They've given us some tools to do that so we need to do a better job of telling the wonderful story that we have and I hope our kids can continue to do that. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm here with Dr. Travis Thayer, who's with Diamond V, and he is an employee technical trainer. And first of all, kudos to Diamond V for recognizing that this is something that's important and of, of huge value to the people that y'all work with. And, and also kudos to them seeking you out as someone to, to go do it because you're just a tremendous human being and someone that has a passion for veterinary medicine and, and, and agriculture and the people that, that work in it. But tell me, you know, kind of what is it you, you, you know, we talked about teaching the why. Yep, at, at the end of the day, really, my job is to teach the why. Mm -hmm. So it, there's a complex set of procedures that needs, needs to get done and there's very specific reasons for each step because and what I tell the guys is we don't just go out there and, and make more work for you just for fun. You know, we don't ask you to do something unless there's a reason why. So, you know, if you give me a sequence of 10 steps and I don't know why step number six is there and it's a pain, I'm going to skip it every time. But if you tell me, well, you know, everything will fall apart if you didn't do step number six and these are the reasons why, that's really what I do is teach those guys and gals, you know, what, what, why, why is this important? Yeah, and I can remember too when they say, you know, the cows come to the feedlot, the cows leave the feedlot. Yeah. You know, well, you know, that's going into our school lunch. That's going into, you know, that's, that's going on our dinner table. Yeah. And kind of explain to the, the why. And I'd never heard it said that way until you mentioned it. I teach the why. And, yeah. and, but it's sit, since home. Let's, let's talk about, too, you know, the other thing is, is you can only be one place at a time. Yeah. And there aren't a whole lot of people with your skill sets that, that, are, that are out there, maybe in California, but yeah. where we're running around, we're, we're, we're short on, on the Travis Thayers. And so, you know, what do, what do you tell somebody when you leave? Yeah. Well, well, certainly, you know, I, I make sure they all have my contact info so that they have questions in between. And sometimes people do use that, especially depending on the level of communication between management and employees uh, to, to help settle some work disputes from time to time remotely or, or just clarify things. But really, you know, the best situation is there's some layer of management that is, is going to continue providing the information that I've brought to the farm. 
so then they'll continue to, to train on it. So you probably have somebody in there. Obviously, you're talking about having that person that's bilingual. But it's probably important to have somebody on the far farm yes. that is going to train the new employees or at least take home the, these important messages that, that you're bringing to the farm so that they don't just die yep. when you walk out the door. And some of that has come in the form of making training videos you know, for a specific farm. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between repetition and redundancy. Yeah. And yeah. repetition is definitely good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, you're good, and we appreciate you being on the show, and we appreciate all you do. Thanks for having me. You bet. We appreciate you all watching Doc Talk. Thanks for watching us today. today. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. If you want to find more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thank you so much for watching us. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.